Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about using the rubric to provide substantive feedback. So as per the faculty fundamental requirements, we're required to provide substantive feedback throughout the grading rubric. And it does note focusing particularly on those critical elements where points have been deducted and areas where the student would benefit from additional insight. Remember to praise the high achievers as well. It also states use the feedback area within the assignments to provide either a summary or a statement such as please return to the assignments area for feedback and score breakdown. So these are the key things we're going to talk about in this video today. So we all know when we go into grade an assignment we have this little button here that brings us to the rubric. So when we go into the rubric and this is an example of a rubric. This is one taken from SCS 100's Project 2. We have the rubric, and then this is where we determine what the student's score will be. Exemplary, you click here, proficient is here, needs improvement, not evident. So this is what a blank rubric looks like. So when you go in to actually assign a category for that section. So for example, choose, you would decide is it exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, not evident. And then you click and that's how you put the score in. But where we're going to talk about is putting the feedback in. So for example, this student met exemplary criteria. So I clicked in the exemplary box and then over in here is where we provide that substantive feedback. So once you've clicked here, you'll notice that a pencil shows up in this section. So you click this pencil and this is where you type in that substantive feedback. So for this particular student, even though she earned full points, I'm praising the high achievement and I'm making a connection. I said, you know, you made excellent connections between the ads and your personal reasons why you selected the ads. I can see your life as a single mom has had a huge impact on your ad choices. So I'm letting the student know, I know who you are. I remember that you're a single mom and I made sure to discuss that in here and mention it so that she knows I know who she is and I can make that personal connection with my student. And again, remember, all you need to do is click the pencil and you can type in feedback. Now, where we are required to provide feedback is any time a student does not earn full points. In the case of an assignment where there is an exemplary column, that would be anything proficient, needs improvement, or not evident. So any of these three categories would require you to provide feedback within the rubric. So you are required to explain to the student why he or she did not earn full points. So in this case, you, know, you can see we have exemplary here, the student earned proficient. So anything below this exemplary on the left would earn proficient would be something where you would be required to provide feedback. So remember, you click the pencil to provide the feedback. And the goal is to explain to the student how he or she could have earned full points. So I acknowledge that the student did touch on the areas of the course, but there was more detail. And then I showed my professional presence as well by explaining, for example, what could you have said about this? What could you have said about this? So I'm giving the student information that will help her be successful on a future assignment and letting her know what it was that, did, that caused her to not earn exemplary points. You'll notice when you complete the rubric at the very bottom, you'll have this overall score row and then right beneath it is this. And just as it says, instructors should not modify this row. So this row right here, anything below this, you should not be touching. You should not touch anything down here. Don't click in any of the boxes. Don't touch the pencil. Just leave this exactly how it is. Once you've completed the rubric, you will click Save and Record. And then you'll be brought back to the page where you have the feedback box in the lower right-hand side. You have options here in this feedback box. You can provide links to different course materials in case you need to refer a student back to a particular announcement or perhaps a particular reading. You can insert images, you can insert videos, and you can also go down here, add files, record audio. You can provide audio feedback for your students. You can actually record an, an audio recording of the feedback. 
You can also record a video for your student for the feedback. All we are asking, all that is required, is that you type something in this feedback box, that you present them with something. So for example, with this, this is what I provided to the student. And you'll notice I started by addressing the student. It's important that we use the student's name, address them by name, let them know we know who they are, we know whose paper we read. This really helps in an online environment because we don't have that face-to-face -face connection. So this is a way to build a connection with our students. Call them by name. Now, I didn't have to start with Sally. I could have said, great work, Sally. But the student's name should be somewhere in the very beginning of this feedback. So again, you'll complete the rubric. And then once you've submitted the rubric, you will come through and you will complete this feedback box. Now, you're not required to type anything in here other than perhaps please see the rubric for feedback. You could type that single line. You could just type great work on the assignment. It's up to you. This box, you really have a lot of freedom in terms of what you would like to put into it. But remember, it cannot be blank and your rubric cannot be blank. So when you are done, make sure to publish. You click that publish button so that the grade is published and the student can view it. So a few key things to remember, no rubric should ever be blank. If a student earns full points on an assignment, you can go through and find something. You can either praise them for something they did. You can say, that was a great idea. Make a connection. You could connect it to, you know, hey, I just read your discussion post and saw you talked about the same topic. That was a great way to utilize this. You can find ways to make connections to personal lives, to their careers. There's a lot of different ways you can make connections. You could provide extra information, show your professional expertise by giving them extra information on the topic. Like, oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed this topic. Here's a web page you might want to go check out. You can do that there too. And remember, if a student has lost points, we are required to explain why the points were lost and what can be done to improve. And that must be done within the rubric and in that section where the points were lost. The feedback section cannot be blank. You have to put something there, even if it's just, please see the rubric for feedback. And remember to address the student by name in that feedback section. That's another important thing to do. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope that you are able to use this and provide good feedback within your rubrics. If you have any questions, please reach out. At the bottom of this in the description, I'm going to put links for the faculty fundamental requirements, for the tips on grading that I've provided, and the video on how to grade that was created by, by SNHU. Thanks. Thanks for watching.